Hello. In this tutorial, I will show you how to model objects using the lathe modifier. The objects that you can create using this technique are also known as solids of revolution. Before start, you should have a previous knowledge about the basics of 3D Studio Max. For this, you can check my other tutorials on the webpage www.macrotutorials.com. The lathe modifier presents a simple way to model an object in 3D Studio Max. You can use it to model different kind of symmetrical objects. This time, I will show you how to create a winding glass. The first step is tracing the shape of the winding glass. To do it well, with a good level of accuracy we will use a picture in the background of a viewport as a guide for the shape of the winding glass. To load the picture, select a viewport. And click on Views in the main menu bar. Now, move the mouse over Viewport Background. And click here, in Viewport Background. This window appears. Here, to load the picture file, click on Files. And in this window select the location on your computer for the file that you're going to use as guide to define the shape of the winding glass. Once you have selected the right file, click on Open. In this case we don't need the animation, so let us leave it like this. And, below it. We can choose if, match the size of the picture to the size of the viewport. Or use real size of the picture. Or use the size of the rendering output, for our background. I will use this. So, the background will have the size of the picture. And in this side, enable display background. Also, enable the option of lock zoom pan, with this enable will be easier work in the model. Below it, you can choose if apply this settings to all viewports or just one. And here you can select the viewport to apply this background. And click OK. As you can see, the picture appears as the background of the viewport. Click on maximize viewport toggle to see it better. As we enable the option of lock zoom and pan. When we pan the view. Also, moves the background. And, if we use the zoom, works too. If you press the G key on the keyboard, the grip disappears. To make it appear again, just press the key G. But for the moment, do it disappear. As the background doesn't look good, we can increase the resolution. So, click on Customize in the menu bar, and at the bottom of the list, click on Preferences. The window with Preferences settings appears, and select the Viewports tab. At the bottom we find the information of the graphics driver that 3D Studio Max is actually using, in my case is Direct3D. Click on Configure Driver. And this configuration window appears, this window will be different if you are using another graphics driver such as OpenGL or software. Now, we find the different options for the background texture size. Actually, a selected 128. We can choose 512 or 1024 and the background will looks better. Or we can enable this option, match bitmap size closely as possible, and at the bottom, click OK. Click OK again. We need to refresh the background. Click on Views, and in Viewport Background. Click on Update Background Image and is ready. Now the background looks good. The next step, is create a line that follows the contour of the winding glass. Then, in the Command Panel in the Create tab. Click on Shapes. Here, you have a list of different shapes. Click on Line. And, the mouse pointer becomes into a cross. Zoom and pan the view as you want and begins to trace the shape of the winding glass. Make a clip and. Move the mouse and click again. This way you can create the shape of the winding glass. As we need to pan the view, to continue, we can make right click to finalize this line. And pan the view. And continue creating the line. Note that the line option is even enabled on the command panel. So, this is a new line. And you can go on, doing the same until you finish the shape. To finalize, make right click, and in the command panel the line options remains enable. With another right click, ends the creation of the lines. Now we need calm by no the lines. To visualize it better, disable the background. If you press on the keyboard that keys Alt and B, the viewport background window appears. Here, disable the option of, display background and click OK. Now, select a line and, in the command panel. In the modify tab. Select line, and. In the geometry group. Select attach. And clicks over the other lines. To finish, click on. Attach again, now we have only one line. But we need to fix the vertices on it, because it's not continuous. 
So, in the selection group, choose vertex. This way. Now, in this part of the shape. As you can see, the line is not continuous. It's separated in its two vertices. To put them together, drags one over the other. Like this. Be sure that the automatic welding option is enabled. Now the other lines. It's easy to recognize what is the separation, because the start point of the lines have a yellow vertex, C. And again, move this vertex, making click and hold it down, and moving over the other. And it's done. You can continue this way, until you have a continuous line. The next step is make more rounded the shape. To do it, enable the background, press on the keyboard Alt and B. And here, enable this option, display background and click OK. As we have already selected the line, we will complete the inside of the cup. Then, in the command panel, in the geometry group, click on create line. This button. Click on this vertex, and. With more clicks we draw the inner shape of the wine and glass, this way. To finalize, right click and. Click on the button and create line, to disable it, or make another right click. We have one extra vertex that we don't want. Just select it, and delete it, pressing the key down on the keyboard. To get rounded the shape, we can select all this vertex. And moving over a vertex and making right click, this list appears. Click on smooth. And as you can see now the shape is rounded. And we can select and move each vertex, to fit better the image of the background that is our guide. In the lower part of the cup, do the same. Select all the vertex. Right click. And select smooth. And move each vertex to match the shape. In this corner it's hard to fit the shape, so let's use another option. Select this vertex and make right click. If you use the corner option, this corner becomes straight, C. If you use the VCR option, in the sides of the vertex appear these two yellow lines with green ends. The yellow line indicates the influence over the shape, or more technically, the tangent of the curve in the vertex. If you move it or rotate it, you can note this. If you choose Bezier corner, you can note that it's pretty similar to previous. But you can modify the yellow lines, or tangents, individually. As we have now ready the line. In the command panel click on vertex. Or click on line, here. To add the modification of the vertices in the shape, and now apply the lathe modifier. Expand the modifier list, clicking here. Look for the lathe modifier. Here it is. And, this doesn't look like a winding glass. In the align group, click on minute. This means that you align the axis of rotation to the midpoint in the shape. Center, to the center of the shape. And, max to the max point in the shape. You can set the rotation amount of the shape. C. You can also, select the direction of the axis, in X, Y, or Z. The right one for us, is the Y in the midpoint. Clicking on the plus sign, here. You can modify the axis, as you want. You can flip the normals in the model and flip those again. To make it more round, increase the number of segments. You can even select the way how build the geometry of the model. In the top side, we can see a hole. This is because this vertex and this other were not aligned. To fix it, first disable the option of automatic welding. And, select one of those and click on Align, and click the other vertex. Disable the Y and Z axis, because we only need this, aligned in the X position, in the minimum point, and click OK. And is ready. Without holes, 